Our uh, rotation's in a good spot right now. Um, you know, we're starting with uh, the group that I think you would have expected us to be starting, and and they're all they all got their work in and and ready to be deployed. So I know Bonnie announced the uh, uh, the rotations lineup as we start the season, and you know. I think that's where we kind of expected it. If you asked in the wintertime, where do you think it would look like if everything played out properly with a, without injury? Um, I think that's how it would have been designed and it kind of played out that way. So, you know, so far as, you know, camp in terms of the starting rotations worked out uh, well. Not much more to add. I mean, just going through the normal spring training uh, in the COVID environment. So, uh, you, you know, any any little issue that's conveyed, you know, you, you kind of react a little uh, larger to. So we just sent them through all the protocols and, and thankfully, you know, um, we've eliminated all, all the stuff other than the fact that every now and then you can come up with not feeling really well. So, uh, but no, he's fine. I've talked to him on the phone and uh, you know, he, you know, but thankfully, you know, uh, he's smart enough to share a, uh, Hey, it's, didn't wake up feeling all that great and, and you, you know, over the last day or so. So you just run through the protocols to make sure you're not in a worse spot. And thankfully we're not, you know, the pollen, the pollen down here in Florida is pretty bad at times and it can get the best of any of us. And, and uh, so it's, he's not been the first one we've had to deal with that in camp nor the last, but obviously when someone like his name is expected to be in a lineup and then it's not, you know, it's going to raise the appropriate questions and concerns. And so um, that's what, that's what we're dealing with. Avoid time surgery today in New York uh, at HSS by Dr. Alchek. Um, that's tonight. Um, Justin Wilson is going to start the season on the DL. He's doing really well, but in terms of, it's one of those circumstances because he's a pitcher, you know, we mapped out, uh, to properly now get him his bullpens, then his live sessions and stuff that would bleed into the start of our season. Uh, physically, he feels like he could go and doesn't want to be on the DL, but in terms of making sure that we, you know, get him built or finished off properly, it, it just bleeds into the regular season. So we're not going to have opening day dictate. Um, all right, he's got to be ready and let's just have him on the roster, you know, and so we had a lot of difficult conversations to make sure that, we handle his return to play protocols properly and, and make sure he checks all the, the throwing boxes uh, along the way, which includes uh, several bullpen sessions and a couple live batting practice sessions uh, prior to getting the all clear. So he's, he's certainly going in the right direction. He did a bullpen today. He feels good, but, but unfortunately he's got a few more hurdles to clear, uh, you know, for us to feel comfortable in releasing him back into the wild. So he'll start the season on the DL retroactive. I'm not officially putting him on the DL by sharing that with you uh, right now. Uh, it'll be done uh, prior to, you know, when the roster is uh, due on, on opening day, but, but in terms of how he's feeling and how he's responded to the downtime, uh, everything's checking out, which is good. And hopefully that continues as he uh, finishes off uh, you know, uh, his spring training that was interrupted with the episode coming off the, the mound uh, not too long ago. Uh, in terms of Zach Britton, I don't really have a time frame. I mean, we're certainly hoping uh, to get him back, whether it's late May or, or June, I guess. And, um, but there's nothing. I know he's doing well. He's feeling well as he's going through his, his post-surgical uh, um, physical therapy. Uh, but there's nothing more to add on him right now. And so as Voight, Britton, and Wilson. Anybody else? We go next to Bruce Beck. Everything and anything, including, uh, you know, getting your team vaccinated down the line at some point, you know, and making sure everybody, you know, gets staggered out and properly vaccinated and feeling good from it. And, uh, and then staying healthy on the field of play regardless and winning your games as many as you possibly can, as soon as you possibly can. So it's, it's all the above, you know, uh, you know, we want to, have a great team on the field of play every time somebody watches us play. And uh, we want to win as many possible games as you can. And then we want our fan base and the industry to be proud of the product that we're producing, um, you know, despite everything that's going on uh, in the time frame we're in. So uh, we leave Tampa, I think, in a pretty good shape, you know, not with everybody we want to leave, but that's true of everybody in any camp. And uh, we're excited to start the major league season. And I know everybody's excited to get fans back into the stands uh, throughout the country. It's a, 
it's an exciting time for the country to be opening back up again finally. And and, uh, and every week is better news, which is great. We're all, you know, I'm not vaccinated yet. And, and I'd say most of and most of our personnel are not player wise or staff uh, because obviously the eligibility hasn't been there. And so, but it seems like every day or so there's a new lower bar, which is great. So we're just, you know, patiently waiting for, you know, those windows to be cleared and a runway to land on so we can, you know, you know, deploy, you know, like everybody else is. We're all waiting, you know, uh, and excited to, uh, you know, to clear that hurdle too. But, you know, we just have to wait our turn. So on the vaccination side, you know, um, whenever they give us the green light, I mean, the medical staff, uh, that's part of the state and, and local <coughs> protocols. And then we'll start putting a game plan together and staggering it properly, but uh, that hasn't happened yet. But we know those days are coming sooner than later because things are opening up uh, around the country and that's that's great for everybody. Um, the other question you had was, I'm sorry. Roster. roster. You have, I'll you give you a few more. Um, so Tyler Wade's on and, uh, and Michael King is on. Um, so uh, I think that, that puts us at 25 and we have a 26th final decision. Uh, that will be made here at some point, but probably not officially today. And um, but I think those are two more names that you didn't maybe officially have just yet. So you're a really tough reporter drilling down on that area. Is that is that what what's the last decision to be made? Uh, who's going to basically replace Wilson? You know, on the roster. Yeah. You know, when whenever he's officially DL. See a player. He's coming in great shape. He's worked his tail off. Uh, you saw obviously a lot of on the offensive side. You saw more results early in camp, uh, less results late in camp. Um, you know, and on the defensive side, he's definitely uh, worked his tail off. And I've heard a lot of positive reviews from from our uh, catching coach, um, and I think uh, his receiving has been improved on that matter. And then you collapse that all into it's March and February and what do you make of it regardless? So, um, you know, when we made the commitment to bring them back and continue that investment, uh, that was a statement that we believe and hope he can continue to be, you know, uh, you know, a, a number one catcher in this game, and of course, obviously, uh, uh, especially with that bat. And so I think that the true test comes in, in the regular season when, uh, when that plays out. So we're going to find out. It's, you know, very similar. Obviously never got a chance to see as much rooms, just saw mostly from afar and limited, limited scouting reports, limited uh, video views, but um, not too dissimilar. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe a, you know, a slight difference in below right now, which is not unusual for his uh, spring training norm. Um, so, but he's come as advertised, uh, you know, kind of, uh, a silent assassin goes about his business in a very professional, quiet way, um, you know. And uh, so, no, he looks he looks good. He looks like he's going to help us. And um, so that was the hope, obviously, by signing him. And we'll just play it out. But so far, so good. Because um, he hasn't pitched a lot the last couple of years, do you have questions about his durability for the season, or by seeing him healthy and pitching well? Is that somewhat answered for you? No, I think the durability stuff is going to be a fair question that nobody really, it's a fair question to be asked of us and of them. Uh, and that's, and we have a collection of those. I mean, whether it's a Jameson Tyon, whether it's a Corey Kluber, whether it's, you know, a Domingo Herman, because, you know, he missed so much time, um, you know, whomever and whatever. And even if you're a reliever coming off of a 60 game, you know, COVID, season where you only pitched you know 18 innings you know it's uh, how are they going to be handling their workload as they approach a 40 or 50 innings or what have you so I think it's fair of everybody and anybody some maybe more than others just because they're coming off of an injury or a Tommy John return or what have you so uh but bottom line is all we can ask for is do they look like they're competing uh effectively and healthy at whatever stage of the game you're at and the answer right now so far has been yes and that's all we can ask for and we believe and hope that uh, there is going to be a long-term contribution and health for them and therefore for us uh, but nothing's guaranteed 
Uh, but we're going to do everything in our power and the best of our abilities to maintain that. Uh, separately, uh, let me throw out before I forget. So Derek Dietrich has agreed to go to our alternate camp. Uh, Chirinos has agreed also to stay along um, with us as well and be part of that alternate site uh, as he comes back from his injury. Um, uh, we've released Julius Chassin as he's evaluating uh, his choices uh, per the mandate of his contract. Um, I'm not sure if I have any more on that level, but I wanted to throw those to the group's way. Just know that when we can keep him on the field, he is, you know, one of the scariest hitters in the game. And, um, and he's been able to stay on the field, obviously, um, throughout this spring. I know last year it got interrupted really early. Uh, I think game two of the season we're in Dunedin when I got that phone call, but yeah, you know, it's hard to say, you know, I know he, he looks good, um, but he's the type of athlete that when he's playing, of course, he's going to look good. You know, uh, when he's out on the field, he stands out. Um, I know he's worked really hard. He's committed. He actually uh, has responded well and, and, and to the training adjustments, um, I believe his communication within our staff uh, has been that it's really, he feels it's really positively influencing, obviously, the ultimate outcome and the efforts that he's putting forth there. But he works his tail off. He commit, he's committed to it. Uh, hopefully, we'll have the, uh, the payoff of blessed full season of health. Um, we'll see. I don't know. Um, but, uh, but I know he cares about it. He's trying. He's working towards those goals. Um, and we're going to, you know, play it out, but it's a competitive sport regardless. Uh, and that makes, you know, anytime anybody's taking the field, you're going to have that risk of an injury happening, uh, whether you're a pitcher or a position player. And so hopefully we can ward off all those, keep them in the, in, in the rear view mirror. Uh, but at the same time, recognizing that, you know, it's 162 grind flying all over the country. He's a big, big man. And, uh, you know, maybe that might mean he's a little bit more susceptible or not, but, but we're going to do everything in our power, as is he, uh, to keep him healthy so that he can really impact that win column for us. Because when we, when we are able to do that, he's a force to be reckoned with. Obviously, racism is, uh, is not welcomed anywhere, and, uh, and I feel horrible, obviously. I, I have not had the article translated. I'm aware of, of, uh, of the article that there was, you know, he, had, he or his family, uh, but his family is part of him, you know, may have experienced um, you know, something. And so I can't speak to it because it's not that he shared that with me or therefore us. Um, but, uh, but obviously there's no place in this world for racism. And, and, um, and so it's heartbreaking to hear any of these stories that come out, whether you're within the game of baseball or outside the game of baseball, it's just, we need to, as a society, do a, you know, a better job of making sure that that is, unwelcomed in any walk of life. And so uh, I'm sorry to hear about it, but I don't know the specifics to it. Okay. And just to make sure I understand you, so uh, Tanaka or, or, you know, you weren't informed of the situation. You just, no. you know, are learning from it through my question or. No, I, uh, I'm not aware of, of, again, I haven't read the article and Masahiro Tanaka nor his interpreter had shared that. Now I did talk to Masahiro Tanaka personally um, when he left to go back to Japan and thanked him for everything here. And we had a really good conversation. It was him and his interpreter, myself and George Rose. And, and it was a very upbeat conversation about, you know, his time with the Yankees and, and uh, you know, and so it was, it was time well spent, uh, but none of that was shared by him to me uh, during that, that basically a goodbye call and a thank you call for, for uh, while he was here and what he did as a Yankee and what he meant to us on the field and off the field and in that clubhouse, but none of that was shared with me now.